This week, we're going to take a break from our series on pandas to deal with the current event of Hurricane Dorian. We're going to look at reading some shapefiles from the National Hurricane Center and try to make a map similar to this. Welcome to another MapPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, we're going to look at the GIS files produced by the National Hurricane Center and make a map using Hurricane Dorian as the current event. If you're watching this at a different date, though, where we don't have Hurricane Dorian files, on the National Hurricane Center GIS page, which is nhc.noaa.gov slash GIS, in addition to the current active storms, they also have sample shape files. Uh, here, Hurricane Irma is the example. So you can download those and follow along. I'm using Hurricane Dorian Shape. So if you click that link, it's going to download a zip file containing many shape files. Go ahead and extract that to wherever you want to work with them. And then we'll hop into the notebook and get started. So in Jupyter Lab here, I'm looking at the file view in this folder that I extracted from that downloaded zip from the Hurricane Center. And we see we've got several files in here. We have the projected line of travel of the center of the storm. We have the polygon or the cone of uncertainty. We have the five day point forecast. So each point where the center is projected to be over the next five days with things like projected wind speed. And we have watch and warning coastlines. So we're going to take all of those files, read them in using GeoPandas, and try to make a map similar to that which we saw. So we're going to start out with lots of imports. This is going to be similar to the SBC map that we did, but with some different twists here. So we're going to import GeoPandas, matplotlib, cartopy.crs, as ccrs, cartopy.feature as C feature. Then we'll use our matplotlib inline magic. So the track line geopandas data frame is going to be geopandas.read file using my tab completion here so I don't have to type these file names. That's our line, our cone geopandas data frame, there's our polygons, except we want the shape file, points geopandas data frame. And so this is a little repetitive, and of course, I would probably, if I was going to use this regularly, uh, functionalize it. But for making our simple map, this is going to work just fine. And then the watches and warnings geopandas data frame. Now, I would encourage you to go through each of these, you know, look at the GeoPandas data frame, kind of explore around a little bit. That's what I did to figure out what data were stored where. Uh, but so the video isn't excessively long. We're not going to go through each one of them individually. But let's just take a quick look at one, say the track line. So that's just going to contain one item, and it is the Dorian Storm line in the geometry column over there. Now, if we look at something like watches and warnings, we have more than one item. So these are different line segments. And this field here would tell you which line segment should be colored what based on the type, whether it's tropical storm, watch, warning, hurricane, watch, warning, and so on. So let's go ahead and get to making a map. We're going to need a map coordinate reference system. 
I am going to still use the Lambert conformal projection here. Central latitude, we'll use 35. Central longitude, minus 100. I'm going to line wrap, standard parallels. Remember, this takes uh, an iterable, so I'm going to give it a tuple of 30 and 60. And then our data coordinate reference system, this is all just in lat lon, which we know is plat curry. So that setup is pretty simple. Now we'll go ahead and make our basic map. So we need a figure. I'm going to make the fig size 14 by 12. We need an axis. We need to specify the projection for that axis. If some of this looks foreign, I definitely go back and take a look at some of our MetPy Mondays on Cartapy Basics. So on that axis, we're going to set the extent. This will be in latitude and longitude. I'm going to go from minus 90 to minus 72 longitude and from 20 to 55 latitude. Then we're going to add some features. I want a coastline. I'm going to call with scale 1 to 50 million. And then I'm going to copy and paste. I want to put four different features on. So we want coastline, state outlines. I want ocean, so it'll color the water blue. And land, so we'll color the land a tan color. So let's run that and look at what our base map looks like. It's going to take a few seconds to run, especially if you have to download some of those files. Okay, so not too bad. Uh, I'm not liking the Great Lakes are colored as land up here. So we'll use lakes. Okay, so that colored the Great Lakes, but I want them to be under the state outlines. Okay, so there we go. Now I've got the state outlines on top of the lakes. That looks a lot better. So now we need to go ahead and plot the data from our shape files on this map. So we'll do it one by one. The first thing I'm going to add is that cone, that forecast cone, because I want it to be the bottom layer and I want to plot everything else on top of that. So I'm going to call axe.add geometries. Our cone geopandas data frame. We want the geometry column or series. Our coordinate reference system is the data coordinate reference system. I want the face color to be white. Edge color is black. The line width for the edge, I'm going to make it a quarter of a point and then make it somewhat transparent with alpha. So there we have our projected forecast cone. So that doesn't look too bad. Now I'm going to add the line track on top of that. So axe.add geometries. This is our track line geopandas data frame. I'm going to add the geometry series. CRS is the data CRS. In this case, face color. Since it's a line, I don't want it to enclose a polygon and color it. I'm going to set that to none. Notice none is a string with all lowercase letters. I don't really like that, but there are some legacy reasons for that. Uh, if you do try to pass the none type, it doesn't work. It still colors the face with the default colors. The edge color, let's make that black as well. And a line width of 2. Now, if we run that, 
we have our projected center track there. So now I'm going to add the points, the forecast points. This is going to be axe.scatter, our points, GeoPandas data frame. And since we're calling scatter here, I'm going to pass longitude as my x coordinate, latitude as my y coordinate, the transform is the data CRS. I'm going to pass a Z order of 10. Remember, this just changes uh, how high or low in the layer stack of plotting that this is. And I happen to know that scatter is going to try to plot behind some things. So we're going to specify 10 to bring it up in the Z order stack. And then I am going to uh, go ahead and run it and see what this looks like. So we meet a comma there, and now we have our points. That's great, but it doesn't really add any information right now because the points are just a single color and they connect a line. So I don't really have to have the points other than, okay, maybe this shows me the date or something like that. But I'm going to go ahead and color them by the forecast wind speed. So C equals points, GeoPandas data frame. And max wind is the series that we're looking for. So now you can see warmer colors, higher winds decreasing. So that makes sense, but we don't have any numerical values with those. So I'm going to save a handle to those scatter points. And I'm going to call plot dot color bar and give it that handle. Now I've got a color bar showing me some values to go with those colors on the data points. So the last file that I need to plot is the watches and warnings. So if we look at the map from the NHC, these are just big fat line segments and they're colored based on this legend down here. So the keys that they use in the file are a little bit cryptic. I just went through and by trial and error figured out which key was which based on the coloring on the map. So very similar to what we did in the Storm Prediction Center map example a few weeks ago, I'm going to make a dictionary. Watch warning colors. TWA. So if we go back and look here, TWA is a Tropical Storm Watch. So Tropical Storm Watch, WA. I'm going to make that gold. HWA. I'm going to make that pink. So looking at our map here, that's Hurricane Watch. TWR, Tropical Storm Warning, it's going to be tab blue. HWR, Hurricane Warning. I'm going to make that tab red. I have a typo there, I need to have a colon. So now I'm going to say for watch warning type in watch warning colors dot keys. So I'm going to iterate over each of the keys in that dictionary. I'm going to create a subset that just contains watches or warnings of that type. So our watch warning geopandas data frame, where our watch warning geopandas data frame TCWW column, which contains whether it is a watch or a warning for tropical storm or a hurricane wherever that is equal to the type that we are dealing with right now. I'm going to call axe.add geometries, our watch warning subset, the geometry series, face color, 
going to be none. Remember to line. The edge color is going to come from our dictionary. So our watch warning colors dictionary with the key of whatever type of watcher warning we're on. The CRS is our data CRS. And those were pretty wide lines, so I'm going to go with a line width of 5. We run that and go down and look at our map, and there we go. We have our watches warnings plotted as those large lines. Looks pretty similar to what we've got here with maybe less extreme colors. And that's really not a half bad map of the projected path of Dorian along with wind speed information and where there are current watches and warnings active. All in really not that many lines of code. So I hope that you found this useful and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.